One time for my birthday. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh no, sad twerking. What happened? I see. I'm broke. My family thinks I'm a lost cause. My love life is a joke. And the punchline is I work at an airport. I'm afraid to fly. You can't let fear keep you from taking off. Come on, let's go. Woman King. Woman King. No, say it like you mean it. Woman King. That's a little bit loud. Sorry. <laughs> How to Die Alone is the latest from actress, writer, and director Natasha Rothwell, who you recognize from the hit shows like Insecure and The White Lotus. In an interview this week, she told producer Tyra Martin that the new show busts the myth that life begins with romantic love. I feel like Hollywood and, you know, movies and rom-coms and Disney, and there's so many things that have told us that your life begins when you find a partner. And I think... What that did for me from a very early age, it was preventing me from seeing the platonic and familial love in my life and valuing it as much as I did my pursuit of romantic love. And I think that finding your tribe and, you know, celebrating the people that are holding you down and holding you up and holding you together, I think that is a worthy story. And I think that is a love story. One of the friends in that all-star cast, and I guess it's safe to say one of her tribe members, Chicago's very own Melissa Dupre of the Humboldt Park Dupre's. <laughs> Humboldt Park native joins us right now. Hi, how are you? Hello, my love. Hola, hola. Uh, now, why were you crying? Because just Chicago's very own means so much to me. Three generations of Humble Park, Chicago through and through. I'm very active and very about my city. And wherever I go, whenever they see or hear from someone from Chicago, they know we're down. They know our work ethic is impeccable, that we are real people. And I love to hear it. Chicago's very own just, uh, I'm emotional. <laughs> I love it. I love it. A second ago, I asked you, you said something about L.A. I said, oh, do you live in L.A.? No, no, no. I'm no. in Chicago. I'm you will Chicago. never leave? Chicago based. I want to see us work here. I want to see us thrive here. I think Chicago has a vibrant economy for film, television, theater, and I want to see more of it. If we can keep pipelining these resources so we don't have that ceiling where people don't have to leave to be validated, that's what I'm about. Principled, based, Chicago, fresh coast, best coast, mid Ooh, best. I love it. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about your role in this and um, how you got to meet uh, the star or the writer or the creator, I should say. Oh, what a journey. Well, I play Tamika okay. and she is an intentionally written Afro-Boricua friend. She's the neighbor to Natasha Rothwell. Her name is Melissa on the show, which was, oh, again, just divine. Right. I got the script, and it just jumped off the page how I speak, how I show up for friends, how I chit-chat with friends, how we break it down, a lot of, like, ooh, honey, and girl. And so it you're just, playing yourself. I, you know, it's really challenging. It's super challenging to play myself. <laughs> Um, but when I put it on tape, I, I actually pulled in my two best friends, Miranda Gonzalez and Wendy Mateo, to tape with me. So that energy was just there and real. And we got a call back. Same thing happened. And when I got into the room with Natasha, she just exudes warmth. She exudes mastery of her craft. So it's just something that you want to just jump in and you want to be good for her. And I wanted to feel effortless. And so right away, we were like, what's your Zodiac sign? Ooh, boom, bam, boom. What's your co-star? Ooh, boom, bam, boom. What's your biggest trauma? Ooh, boom, bam. So mm -hmm. it was really easy to connect and really easy to dive into this character and I what I love about her writing and also Vera Santa Maria two black and brown women who are just at the helm the more you bring your authenticity to it the more they start writing for you and the more they start coloring that character with little bits of your personality so the more you watch Tamika the more you're gonna see Melissa so you feel comfortable in it I feel comfortable, but I also feel so seen. I feel yeah. so represented by these stories and by the way that we kind of build our own fantasies and build stories in our mind. What people are going to see in the show is they're going to see themselves and they're going to see the narratives that they put themselves through. And they might be called out by like, do you do this? This is not true self-love. Mm -hmm. If this yeah. feels like you, then maybe you need to follow this character a little bit more and deeply and to try to find the fullest, most authentic version of your own life. Why is it taking so long for us to see Afro-Latinas, to see African-American, mm. Why women specifically? Why is it taking so long to see it more prevalent? Well, one, I'm happy to see it happening and existing now. I have been blessed to have three very intentionally written Afro-Boricua roles, uh, one on Empire, one on Grey's Anatomy, and now Tamika here. And I think that is a tribute to all of the Afro-Latinas that have walked before us, that have really paved the way, like Gina Torres, Lisa Vidal, N Lauren, uh, you know, like numerous actors mm -hmm. um, who have really just stepped into every role. And then later you find out, oh my gosh, she Latina? 
And I get to just wear that fully. And I think we still have a long way to go. What is, what is keeping us behind is not having enough of our narratives and our people who are experts of their experience behind the camera, writing for it, producing it, Because Natasha it. wrote this. She, this is hers. It took eight years. Wow. It's not easy to do, especially if you want to be the writer of your own story. It takes a lot of work, and then it takes someone to back you. I'm sure it took her... Um, really owning her own stars on Insecure. I'm sure it took her owning her own chops on White Lotus. It mm -hmm. takes a lot of validation from other people. And I think one of our, one of our biggest um, barriers is financing and representation. We need people yeah. who believe in us from the get-go. Where can we see you do stand-up quickly? All over the place. <laughs> I'm here in Chicago. My next stand-up show is when I produce myself at uh, Gamers Hall on North Avenue in Central Park. I, I had hosted all summer a, a comedy series where I also put up amateur artists. And oh so now goodness. we're doing our amateur finals I and I have come. wonderful judges. We're going to be doing stand up there, but I'm also going to be seen at um, Las Locas Latina Comedy Festival, October 3rd through the 5th. All right. How to Die Alone is streaming right now on Hulu.